Well, we're, we're, we're good to host the greatest lasagna in history. And also, they've stolen some toilets from City Hall. Freebird gets weirder and weirder every day. So, welcome back to This is the Police. Uh, we're in a bit of trouble. I mean, the war, the, the gang war is over, which is great. But we're suffering from budget cuts. Our detectives are hitting this moment where their wheels are just spinning in the mud. They're not making any progress on the cases. We're in, we're in trouble. We're in trouble in terms of, in terms of... Just generally the Freeburg Police Department. Oh, fucking. Last Temptation of Neptune. I need to read Last Temptation of Neptune. Uh, because apparently... Apparently it's worth a read. I mean, that was Chopin. Chopin! Okay, Shift B has so many cops. Uh, a man took his dog out for a walk and upon turning home notes, a crowd hooding figure uh, fumbling with a car at the end of the street. Could be, could, could be a false alarm, but could also uh, not be a false alarm. So let's have Chin and Jorgensen take care of that one. Uh, as for the ongoing investigations, Bloody basing is useless. She's so insanely bloody useless. Um, but we might be able. She might make progress today. I need. We're a couple of frames off of. I think about three investigations being closed. Oh, it is trouble. Gardner Powers, go help out, will you? I need to get the sort of bottom level of Shift B. They all need to get up in terms of their abilities. So, <laughs> a man with dilated pupils boarded the bus and pulled out a gun, possibly fake. He's demanding that the bus immediately leave for Africa. Ferdy and Jay Boogie, can you head up a team made up of the sort of more junior guys? And you know what? The SWAT team can last a while, so... Take them with you, just make sure the gun's done right. The job's done right. The carjacking. The offender has been caught. Nice work. Let's get them all up. Okay, get yourselves back to the station. The minute we've only got Fitzsimmons on the job. But still, Sand is victorious, which is, uh, is good. Offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good work, everybody. 712 in progress. What's going on down here? Uh, an anonymous call came in. Hello, I have information about a missing girl called Lisa Pettigrew. I kidnapped her a week ago, and now she's ready to go home. You can find her at the True Color Hotel, uh, room 180B. But hurry if you want to see her alive. Interesting. Powers. Uh, Jay Buki. Pavlova. Millsap. Swat. Get out to the hotel. Um, so it's going to be difficult for Chivers, but mm, we'll try. I'll try and get Pav certainly Pavlovina, maybe Millsap over the uh, two hundred mark. Uh, a passerby reported he saw a Mike motorcyclist pull up to a gas station carrying a gun. He then entered the station without removing his helmet. He heard screams and gunshots. Chin, Gardner, Purdy, Jorgensen, Fitzsimmons, Chivers, Subaki, I'm holding you back. We've got a situation here. Room 180B is. Um,
Located on the top floor of the hotel, red ball is hanging from the doorknob, and the words written on the ball read, Call the bomb squad. Uh, enter the room for the hotel's roof. Get a key from the hotel room. Break down the door. Let's go through the hotel's roof. Inside is a standard motel room. Complete with bed, bedside table, telephone, and TV. The curtains are drawn and sitting on the bed is a girl strapped with explosive red and red, yellow wires protruding from the bomb. Let's wait for the bomb squad. That's their job. Making those calls is not our job. Here we go. Uh, wow, we are actually going to use the entire worth of the SWAT team today. Um, at the end of a high school reunion party, a naked young man entered the restaurant with an object in his hand, vaguely resembling a gun. He was behaving very erratically. He then jumped up on the table and threatened, started threatening the restaurant's patrons. Well, let's wait for my cops to get back. And send them out. Powers. Subaki. Pavlovina. Melsap. The SWAT team. And the paddy wagon. The SWAT team has been entirely used in a day. That's ridiculous to me. Uh, and we got the biker. Which is not Chivers up, at least. Pavlovina is going to cross over the 200 mark uh, as long as this job succeeds. Which it should. Massive fight. Uh, Freeburg lost to Pittsville 12 to nothing, and the local fans are furious. They were screaming and swearing at the visiting team as they retreated to the locker room. Himself enraged by one of the insults, the visiting team's captain threw a stick and struck one of the fans in the face. Uh, a massive brawl routed involving the fans, players, referees, and even the concession hawkers. Uh, I have I have time. I can wait. I don't get SWAT back, but I do. I should get the paddy wagon. Nothing can be heard from the street, but screams and the sound of smashing plates can be heard within. Use the megaphone. When a young man spots the police, he grabs a woman and puts a gun to her head. He yells something unintelligible and squeezes the hostage's neck. His gun appears to be a toy. Let's all calm down talk this out. Well done. SWAT team's down, but we can get the paddy wagon back. Uh, and then there's a massive fight we need to break up, which will require most, if not all, of Shift B. So. Purdy. Powers. J. Boogie, Subaki, Pavlovina, Fitzsimmons, Millsap, Shivers, Jorgensen, Gardner, and the Paddy Wagon because we don't have um, SWAT. Chin, you better hope that you can do this job. Uh, assault a taxi driver call from a payphone complaining that a violent customer refused to pay the fare and uh, attempted to leave the car. When the cab driver locked the door, the man went berserk, broke the car's safety screen, and attempted to strangle the driver. The driver managed to escape, but the assailant remains locked inside the car. Chin, you can handle all that. God, she's overtaken the rest of the squad. I doubt my next request from City Hall is going to be approved. Uh, assault. Oh, she got him! Well done! The armed robbery. Oh my god! Armstrong! Right. Okay, Basinger. Let's, let's have a look. he won't have broken in. He won't have needed to. I was trying to raise 10 or 
I I don't have anything. Just see what you can do. Well done. Well done, team. Got Gardner up. Chivers is up to 145, which isn't bad. Millsup, if we get one more job and I can send her out on, which I doubt we will. Uh, am I... Uh, there's, the, there's the hire the consulting detective option. I may have to do that to make any sort of headway on these things. Drunk student falls from fifth floor window, injured. This fall, record rainfall in Freeburg. Accident in the reservoir of water runs out in two days. Two days. Two. Two days. Okay, we do get strikes for shift A. Cool. Um, and you know what? I think... Uh, Fraser has earned her stripes as a as a commander. So, oh, you know when a police chief really feels his power? When he hires and fires people? When he throws folks in jail? When he's bossing everyone around all morning? No, there's no power there. Just bureaucratic red tape, like directing traffic. Not that it's all bad. No, I feel it the most when people come to me with accusations. Accusations happen outside the law. They don't need to be rational or supported by evidence. They don't petition justice in the careful words of legal formality. No, an accusation is a personal cry, full of resentment or envy, a defeated moan or an angry howl. The accuser rarely imagines you'll share their resentment, their envy, their hatred. No, but they do imagine that your love of power is so strong that you'll leap to decide the fates of others, happy just to take someone's word for the facts. Businessmen accuse the gangsters, the gangsters blame our public figures, public figures denounce politicians, the politicians point to the businessmen. When it comes to accusation, there's only one rule. Don't aim too high. If you overestimate your own importance, then complaining can cost you your life. So choose the easier path. Exaggerate as far as you can, and try to make your plea sound as sad and pathetic as possible. The accusation I received today sure didn't fit the normal mold. After killing Vickis Varga and routing his supporters, Sand further strengthened his already powerful authority. Even a month ago, anyone coming out against Sand would sound like a lunatic with a death wish. Today, it's the same thing as suicide. But the letter I'm holding in my hands directly connects Henry Sand, lieutenant of the Sand Mafia family, to the reported death of successful banker John Pazzi. Henry has a daughter, Marianne, a dancer, and apparently it all started with her. One day, Marianne danced in the title role of a production of Giselle, and Henry, proud father that he is, brought the whole family to the premiere, along with some of the family's business partners. Among their guests was the young banker John Pozzi. He couldn't keep his eyes off Marianne, but she ended up brushing him off. In response, Pozzi ambushed her one night after rehearsal, pulled her into his limousine, and had his way with the poor girl. After that, gentleman that he was, he drove the girl home and threatened that if she told anyone what happened, her mother would get the same treatment. But her father still managed to shake the truth out of Marianne, and he decided to take his revenge. Of course, Henry knew he couldn't just go with his instincts and put a bullet in Potsy in broad daylight. The rich bastard was too important for business, and Henry is neck deep in the family business overseeing transportations for the San Mafia. He knew about every delivery delay, every car, and every shop. It was mostly thanks to Henry that the whole sand operation rolls so smoothly. Henry has free access to all their off-book cars, and a tar black motive. Yeah, he could easily arrange the death of John Pozzi as a drunken, late-night hit-and-run. But Henry Sand is smarter than that. If this story about Potsy is true, 
He'd more likely go to the boss and ask permission. I'd have figured this letter the ramblings of a retired gangster looking to spice up his life with little excitement. The way the letter started, my dear little old cop cake, I had every mind to toss it in the trash. But something else got my attention. They're rarely ever signed. But this one ended Robespierre, and I doubt it's an imposter. No one would go against the most powerful group in the city, hoping to hide behind the name of some prankster clown. Like everyone else, I had no idea who Robespierre was or what he wanted. But there was no doubt that this guy was more than a little crazy. An arrogant psychopath. Could be dangerous. Definitely worth looking into. I would say so. So, last day for this episode, let's give us some Ludwig. Presumably the Robespierre, yeah. I know exactly which detective I want on this. Unfortunately, he's busy with the robbery, and I can't pull him off it. Um, I would definitely be arresting the wrong guy. Uh, right, you're going to have to assist. Because you... Wait, is Moser heading up an investigation right now? Or is he assisting in one? He's heading one up. Are oh, my lead on this hit and run? Three armed robbers wearing masks entered the bank and demanded the manager open the safe. Let's see if I can't get uh, Birch Jr. over 200 today. When do I get to request a new thing from City Hall? When do I get to request? Not that I'm tomorrow, but not that I'm thinking I'll get away with it. Okay, what's our... Mr. Potts, sometimes I have to walk the city late at night. I don't know what the accent is, actually. I was going for Italian-American, but I don't know what the hell I've ended up with. Uh, just taking him out after a long business dinner. We pulled up to the park near the monument. And I didn't notice anything suspicious, although there was a great truck that didn't have any license plates. Uh, if I was in the park from the restaurant, but then it turned off somewhere. Miss Patsy died immediately on impact. A heavy vehicle struck him at high speed. The bruises on his body show traces of a grill, so you may be looking for a Jeep or a truck. Soft shape, tissue coatings, fragments, contain fragments of a windshield, so it appears the blow is strong enough to throw his body into the air through the windshield. The victim's clothes soak traces of grey paint. That's fine. Grey truck, unmarked. Definitely what it was. I run the park at night. Today I had the road on motorcycle, so I went to check it out. I figured it was bikers who liked to race the empty road. But when I went closer, I saw the road was empty. Then I saw the body, so I called the police. But it wasn't that. Motorcycle tire tracks and shut glass to find the crime scene. A nearby intersection, a surveillance camera recorded a group of bikers, and behind them you can make out a green Jeep with a cracked windshield. Following the bikers, maybe, but not the bikers who did the job. Uh, assaults. A young woman, frightened to death, just called from the trade union. A drunken factory worker broke into the building. The same man who yesterday visited the union, demanding return the money thus withheld from his salary over the past six years. The man is shouting and threatening to break through the service window. Fraser takes Smith and go handle that. Numata, I'm holding you back. Got a situation here. 
The bank's located in the city center. There's a lot of traffic and civilians. Um, sneak up and peek inside. One shot can be heard inside. Wait until they come out. We go in, they get hurt. When they come out, we're, we're surprised. Numata, can you uh, back them up at the trade building, please? Armed robbery at the jewelry store. We just received an alert from the jewelry store. Six armed men wearing gas in this room since demanding all the cash and jewelry replaced in a large garbage bag. Uh, I can give you five cops swap in the paddy wagon. Assault. Defender was caught. Good. Okay, we got cops. Uh, during a Production of My Sweet Julia the Zombie. Actors in the performance were busted by flying eggs thrown by someone from the audience. Uh, the assault was accompanied by shots of shame, necrophilia, how dare you much such a classic. Upon the elderly theatre guard, the eggs were thrown by ten young girls, all dressed in white. I don't have the paddy wagon available, so I'm just relying on three cops. I can't give you it. I need to see how it goes. Defender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Well done. A call just came from a girl who went at first off barbecue up with someone. When the food was almost ready, a group of junk students suddenly appeared claiming that it was their spot and a massive fight broke out. Give us a second, I'll get some cops on it. You're already firing me, so... Hey, well done. Okay. You're already firing me, Mayor, so... Uh, not really in the mood to help you, to be honest. Oh, well. Armed robbery. Three armed thugs managed to rob the audience of a playhouse. Before the civilians realized what was happening, the criminals had already fled the seal. Until the last minute, everyone thought it was just part of the show. The cloakroom said the robbers left in a yellow school bus. I have three cops and SWAT. That's what I can give you. Arrested the students. It's fine. Uh, oh god, Shift A needs some more people. Oh dear, Shift A needs more people. It's fine. I've got people for that. Welcome back. Okay. Ho. An eyewitness reported that a man drove the gas station. Got out, shot the guy behind the counter with an automatic rifle. And now he's just standing there quietly filling up his gas tank. What a charming gentleman. If you need backup, let us know. Even late at night, the right bus wasn't too difficult. The colonel's abandoned it less than a mile from a suburban hotel. Check the motel. 
Three men threatened me with the guns. When I said we had no more rooms, I put them in a room we already rented. You won't be happy when our guests return. Let's let's trick them. Nice work. Hopefully you get back before the others end up needing um, backup. Not quite. What we got? Beasley! It's not the homeless guy. Right, let's see this. This should be easy enough. So black sedan. Did they threaten her? No, I didn't see any weapons. They didn't walk in. They got on the lift. Not quite, okay. Hit and run. Is that grey? He did not go under the wheels. He was definitely walking. Let's put that up, but he did not go under the wheels. Oh, you got the guy. Nice work. Birch Jr. made it over 200. Uh, bring it, bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Uh, deputy. It's fifth. What the? F no. Shift A looking not so sharp. Shift B looking pretty sharp. Nice work. And there's no war. Oh. Where am I? Oh. Oh. Jack, you always come back so late. What's wrong? Bad news? Good news, Jack. Laura is ready. Ready how? She's coming back? When? Not that fast, Jack. Laura's ready to talk. But if she's ready to talk, she's getting ready to come back. You just need to find the right words. Y you can find the right words, right, Jack? I'm not an idiot. I didn't ask for this, Jack. It's the middle of the night, and I'm alone on an old farm, 40 minutes away from anywhere, sat on a creaky porch, and now I'm getting snapped at. I came here so you could personally promise me that you'll be able to find the right words. So let's try again. You can find the right words, right, Jack? I can find the right words, Mrs. Markham. That's good to hear. Tomorrow night at 3 o'clock at the Octopus Restaurant. You know it? Yeah, but it's closed at night. Oh, I've arranged for them to be open. Don't be late. But don't come too early, either. Mrs. Markham? Yeah? I should probably offer you some tea or something before you go. <laughs> Do you have any tea? No. Good night, Jack. Well, that was interesting. So next time we're uh, we'll go and we'll meet Laura. We'll see what happens. I don't really know what's going on anymore, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so if you enjoyed this episode, why not give it a like and subscribe for more just like it? And I will see you guys next time on the Kilted Games.